Hi, and welcome to Take Time to Create. Today I am going to do a mixed media canvas using my fat quarters that I picked up while I was in Hawaii. Now if you want to see that haul, my crafty goodies haul from Hawaii, I will link that down below. Also I will link the fabric quilt shop that I purchased these fat quarters from down below. Great shop. I had a really good time. The owner was absolutely fabulous and very, very helpful. So I will link all of that down below. But we will go ahead and get started using these fat quarters and I have a bunch of other colors for this mixed media canvas. So let's get started. The first thing you're going to need is a 20 by 20 canvas. Now this is the size I'm using. If you have an eight by 10 or a 12 by 12, that all works just fine. I just want a giant. If you want small, great. Whatever you have, use it. If you want to use a canvas board, that works too. I have a regular canvas. And the first thing I'm going to do is paint the sides and I'm going to paint up a little bit in black. And I'm using Soho Urban Artist Acrylic Ivory Black. Honestly, this is what I had in my stash. Any black acrylic paint will work, doesn't matter. So just paint the edges and then bring it up. Okay, so I'm just going to paint just like this. Now, I'm thinking that the edges will be covered, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm kind of making this up as I go. I just imagined this project when I was at the quilt shop. So I am not 100% sure how this will all go. But you know what? It's an experiment and I love it. And that is the whole purpose of mixed media. And it looks like I'm going to need two coats. So I'm going to do that and I will be right back. Okay, so I have the edges painted and I painted up a little bit, you know, so you can see I painted just a little bit. I didn't paint the whole thing because we're going to cover it all. This is just in case you can see the edges and I did paint all four sides. Now set that aside to dry. So the next step is to take some of your fat quarters and what we're going to do is we're just going to trim off a few strips of them. Don't use the whole thing, just a couple strips of a few colors. Now, if you haven't guessed what I'm going to be doing, what I'm going to be doing is creating a beach scene out of this fabric with mixed media. So to start, and what I'm going to do is just cut a few strips of each of the colors. Now, some of them have designs on them like this one. So I'm not actually going to cut this one up. I may use it as accent pieces because this is just so gorgeous. Actually, you could just frame this and be done. Ta-da, I finished a mixed media. Look how pretty this one is. Love it. Uh, so that one I will wait, but this one, it just has uh, flowers on it. So I'm just going to cut about that much. And it's okay if it frays, it's okay because we want to have lots of texture, lots of cool things going on. And I just left it in half. So there we go, that's my first little strip. And I'm going to cut two of these and leave the rest. I may need more of this, but I may need less. So I don't want to waste and actually since my canvas is so long, I'm actually going to cut the other way as well. And I think I might do that for all of them. I will want shorter pieces. I will want longer pieces, but for this one, because it's kind of in between, this is going to be a transition one between the beach and the ocean or, and the sky. So because it has the beachy colors, so we'll just do that. This one is an ocean or sky one, and it's just absolutely perfect. Look how pretty this is. Not all of these will work. Some will, some won't, but none of this will go to waste. I'm going to, I'm going to actually move my Teflon mat. I don't want to accidentally cut it, and I have before, so I would just want to try not to cut it. Okay, so that is what I'm going to do for all the fat quarters I have. You don't need to watch me do this, so <laughs> I will do all of these and then I will get right back to you. So see you in a minute. All right, now the next step, what you wanna do is start laying these out. And if you want to have a reference photo, that's absolutely wonderful. 
I don't have a reference photo. I'm just kind of going off of my imagination and it's just a beach scene with the sun. So I'm just trying to lay out my colors where things go. And I have a whole stack of fabrics. And I'm not exactly sure how this is all going to go, but we're just going to see. And it may just be that I have a beach, a little bit of a beach down here and more of a sun. So I have my sun here. Let me move everything. This is my sun and then I'm going to have some orange around my sun. And now I, I don't want to have it all lined up straight, you know, line straight, line straight, lines. St now, if that is what you want, absolutely go for it. If you wanted to get out a rotary cutter and a mat and just cut these so they're all exactly an inch or two inches, absolutely. Go for it. Use what you have and use, you know, do what, what makes you feel good. So I kind of want a leading line, an angle for my beach. I'm a little off center here. Let me see if I can push that up a little bit. All right. So I want a leading line for my beach a little bit peeking out here. Let's see what else I have. What other beachy colors do I have? These aren't 100% beachy beachy, but they're pretty good. I have this one, which I really like. Maybe I'll put that around to get my, my orange and my reds really for my sun. Then I have a lot of reds, a really red sun, maybe, maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure. So kind of like this, like my bright colors. Now I really wouldn't push having a lot of detail. So I'm not going to put palm trees or mountains or volcanoes or anything else on here. I am going to leave it pretty basic here. So it's an impression of what is going on. It's not going to be, oh, that's exactly this because that won't work. This is a very abstract impression that it's an impression of a beach scene. It's not, oh, definitively, this is a beach and there'll be no questions asked. No, it's not quite working that way. So I'm just starting to put things down and how it's going to work on this beach scene is you want to have a little bit here, a little bit there and in the mountain or in the clouds, I'm going to mix up intersparse some blues, dark blues, light blues. And I'm going to put a lot of blues up here. So I'm going to finagle with this for a little while and see how this goes. And then I'll be right back. All right. So I have a very, very rough idea of what I want it to sort of look like. So what I'm going to do is kind of pull off everything in lines and, and uh, opposite of where it's going to go. And I am going to set it all aside except for my sunshine. And so this is my sun and I'm starting there so that I know where it goes, first of all, and then I can build everything off of that. So we're going to start with my sun. So what I'm going to start with is Liquitex gloss heavy gel and I'm going to put that down on the canvas. And I also have some Art Basics. This is a Fenibar product and it's the soft gloss gel. And this is transparent. And I want it transparent because I'm actually going to use that to make the fabric a little stiffer and to give it shape. And this Liquitex, it is uh, mostly transparent and I like that. And it's a heavy body consistency because I really want this to stick down. And since this is mixed media, it's okay if there's texture in there. In fact, we want texture, but I really want to make sure everything is going to stay and not go anywhere. Now, this is the first layer and it's going to take a few days to dry and that's just the way life goes. And then I will put layers on top of it after that. And so what I'm going to do, and don't be afraid to get your fingers in there, because that's just the way life goes. You're going to need to get dirty. All right, so once you have your gel down and then now it's time for your soft gloss gel and make sure your hands are clean because don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. And I'm actually going to just dip it in there 
may or may not be the right way to do it and then wring it out and just slide it around and I'm just going to get the whole thing soaking wet now can you use Mod Podge probably I don't just this is what I picked up this is what I grabbed today and so it's what I'm using now I'm just going to make a wrinkly pile of a middle for the sun. Now this is why I wanted to make sure that it was a transparent color because I soaked it and I want to make sure it's going to be stiff because I want to make sure it's going to stay and I'm going to move that over. I'm doing the rule of thirds. Now if you don't know the rule of thirds in photography you have your things set up in a rule of thirds and this is in this quadrant here so my son will be in this section and I'm able to move things around for a while because it is not just stuck yet and that's the beauty of these products is that they aren't going to dry super duper fast so I would not recommend hot glue because that will dry too fast. I'm going to take the orange and yellow because this is yellow just yellow yellow and I'm just going to dip the end in there and kind of pull it down this is a very very messy project my favorite kind all right pull it on down get everything all nice and glass gelled on there and then what we're going to do is I'm going to start making the sunshine a little bit bigger a little orange and then we're going to add some red in there too I don't know if it's a sunset sunrise I'm not sure it's very abstract so this is not a photograph by any stretch of any imagination. So if you're looking for a very realistic beach project, this is not the one for you. But if you want something fun and creative and a little different, by all means. And I want it wrinkly, but I don't want the white canvas showing. I want it textury and wrinkly. I want it to show up. So the patterns won't really show on the fabric, which is just fine because you don't, you don't need to worry about it. Now, if you wanted the, the patterns to show, you could straighten it out a little bit more and have it a little flatter, but the sun is going to be a little bit circular and more wrinkled. And then when we get to the beach and the uh, sky, it'll look a little different. I am going to fast forward to the video right now so you can see me putting together the sun and uh, let's get going. Okay, now I have the sun. I like the size. I like the placement. So now it's time to do the beach. And I'm going to make the beach kind of flow this way. But I'm going to start with this one because I feel like this is a transition from beach to ocean or beach to sky. And that is my transition one. I'm adding more of the gloss gel and I'm kind of not making it super smooth. And this is where the question mark comes. Do I go wrap it around the edge or do I leave it black? And I think, I don't know, I'm gonna see how it looks on the edge. I might just leave the edges black. I don't know if I'm gonna wrap it or not. As you're working don't want you don't want it flat straight lines because nature is not straight so 
put some curves in there, put some swirls, put some movement into your piece. Now some parts you might want to use only a part of the fabric. Go ahead and trim that, but don't use your good scissors. You'll make a sticky mess out of them. Okay, so this bottom part has been drying for a while. I took a little break and it's looking pretty good. It's drying and I'm loving it. So now it's time to work on the sky or sea or whatever. And so what I'm going to do is I have this color. It's kind of a tealy color and I have this teal and white. I'm going to use this as a transition and then I'm going to use this teal and dark blue color as another transition all the way up to the bright blue sky. So I'm just going to use these three colors and I'm going to transition. And what I'm going to do is actually make it more horizontal for sky because this is more the sky because this is beach here and then this is water and then this will be sky. So the beach kind of goes at an angle but then I'm going to take the sky and make it more horizontal so that it adds a little bit more dimension to the project. So yeah, I'm just going to do the same technique and just get to it. Okay, so the sky is done. Make sure before you let it dry to go and make sure there's no white canvas showing. Make sure you've got the right amount of wrinkles everywhere. Not too many, not too little, whatever works for you. Uh, and just make sure it all looks good and make sure your beach, let me scoot it down and make sure my beach here is connected to my water or to my sky. Let me tuck that under uh, and, and just, Try to get it all together. It probably would have worked a little better if I didn't take that break, but that's okay. Just do it all in one fell swoop and just get it done. Now, this isn't the end of this project. Now, you could leave it like this when it all dries. You could leave it. It looks great. I love it, but you know me. We're going to add more, but this has to thoroughly dry. So leave it drying probably overnight. It might take two days. There's a lot going on. So let it dry and then uh, we'll, we'll come back to it. Okay, so now we're back and this is all dry and it feels really good, really solid. I don't think it's going anywhere. And the way my camera's set up, you can't see it all at once, but I will show you at the very end. I'll have some close-up pictures. What I'm going to do now is I think the beach needs some seashells. So I literally just took some seashells and I just kind of poured them down and I didn't film my placement of them because they're not adhered yet but I wanted to get a good idea and see what I was going for. I'm going to use the Liquitex heavy gloss gel again and I'm going to adhere all of these and I'm using the gloss again because everything is all nice and glossy and shiny and I like that a lot. Stick that up here and I like to have odd numbers so I, I actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little areas of seashells. And they're a mixture of either just tiny ones or a large one, not too big. I'm not going giant on this. So, and all I'm doing is just taking a little bit of gel and just sticking it on there and just plopping it down. That's it. I'm not really worried about placement as in precision because I want this more of a natural, organic and Seashells, if you've ever been to the beach, they just kind of wash up. They aren't placed there unless somebody goes and places them. But when they wash up, they fall everywhere. There's big ones next to little ones. There's all different sizes. So we're just going to put them all together. And I will fast forward through this because this will take a while. Thank you. 
All right, all of the seashells are now on, and I, I like how many I have, but I may add more later. It just depends. Now I have some pearls, and these are just from an old plastic pearl necklace I found probably at Goodwill or, or something like that, maybe even Who Gives a Scrap. But I thought little pearls would be really pretty, just part of the seashells, just randomly interspersed around, just kind of adding another little detail, like mermaids dropping little pearls. And just try to be as random as possible. If it doesn't end up super random, that's okay too. And this little guy over here needs three little pearls. I like to nestle them in with the seashells. And I just thought they'd add a nice little detail. All right, all my little pearls are now adhered down, and right now is a great time if you want to move something, if you don't think it's adhered hard enough, you know, it's still wet and you're able to work with it. So now's a good time if you need to rearrange things. And I'll wipe up what you have to. I'm scooting it down so you can see the top. Now, I may not be done with adding the pearls and seashells at the bottom, but for right now I am. and. I can always add more later. I'm starting out with some heavy gesso, and this is the white color, and it's Art Basics. It's another Finnabar product. And I will link everything down below, and they are affiliate links, of course. And if you click on the link, I just get a small bit of money from it, and I appreciate all your support. And it's no extra charge to you if you use an affiliate link, which is pretty great. I am using the Art Basics Finnabar brushes as well. This is the one inch and I just love these brushes. You see them all the time. And what I'm going to do is just take a little bit of the gesso and I'm not taking very much. And you can see I, I dipped in here and then I'm actually wiping off a bunch off the side. And I'm going to add some clouds to the sky. Let me move that. Okay. I'm going to add some clouds and what I'm going to do is just lightly paint over some areas and I'm just kind of creating the area and I'm just taking just a little bit and I'm actually going to swirl it around just a little bit and it's more of an impression of a cloud. It's not like, oh yeah, that's a cloud. It's more of, oh, I think that's what that is up there and that's more what we're going for. I want the fabric to still show through, but I don't want it so, so much. And clouds aren't those fluffy things you drew in elementary school. They have dimension to them. They've got different colors in them. So we will be adding more colors. And this one has too much. So I'm wiping it up just so it's not quite as prom prominent. Now we're going to add some other paints and what we're going to start with is the metallic paints and these are the um, Art Alchemy from Finnabar and this one is in Mermaid Teal. We're also going to throw in the Sparks paints as well. We have Mermaid Sparkle and we have Magical Pond. And we also have a dark blue of the metallic one, which is the Midnight Sky. I did do a review on both of these different Finnabar products, and I will link those down below as well. And I do love these. And why I'm using them is because they're not a super thick paint. They are a little bit on the thinner side, and I love that for this project because I don't want to have a lot of paint soaking in. It's more of a hint, more of a detail that we're adding, not coating everything and just, you know, being one big blob of paint. All right, and let me scoot this up a little bit. For the brush, I'm going to use the half inch. It's the angled brush so that I will be able to get in wherever I need to. And I'm just going to be cleaning off my brush and going into the different colors. It's, uh, it's going to be just kind of a little random, but I thought I could add you know, some teal paint, just highlighting here and there. And this is, more of the ocean part right here. This is this is where the uh, water is breaking over the 
the beach here. That's what I did with these colors. All right. I got this part done. Oh, I really like this. This is so pretty. All right, my beach is now done and I'm going to go up here a little bit and I'm going to add some of this magical pond and I'm just going to add this into the blues and I'm going to get a bigger brush actually. I'm using the three quarter inch brush from Finnabar. I just need a bigger brush to swipe over these bigger areas. I have to have a little bit of patience, let things dry, and then I will be right back. So there you go. This is our completed fabric landscape mixed media canvas. Thank you so much for watching. You can find me on Instagram, Facebook, and on my blog. Like this video, subscribe to my channel. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you guys next time.